Good evening, everybody. As you can probably tell, Pastor Ed is not here tonight. But the good news is, the Holy Spirit is, and the Word of God doesn't change whether it's Pastor Ed or somebody like me. By the way, I am Pastor Gary, and I am an associate pastor here at the Rock Church. So let us get started tonight simply by opening in prayer. Father, we come before you. We ask, Lord, that you allow your word to come forth in a way that brings power to us, Lord, that brings deliverance, that brings edification, Lord, that it just touches us, changes us, and lets us be who we are desiring to be in Christ. So we thank you, Lord, that your word does not change, but that it is always the same. Hallelujah. Well, tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about the times that we're in, kind of along with what Pastor Ed has been doing, which is simply this. We're in the times in which there is confusion, there is all sorts of things going on, um, and unfortunately, all these things that are going on are simply causing most of the body of Christ to have no peace, which really is something that should not be. We should have peace in the midst of the storm. And that's really what I want to talk to you about is peace. Where do we find that peace? How do we obtain that peace? How do we live in that peace? How do we let it be such a part of our life that we're not moved by everything that's going on? And I want to read to you the description or the meaning of peace out of the Webster's Dictionary. It simply says it is a state, of, a state of tranquility or quiet, freedom from civil disturbance. Well, that's the kind of peace that when people see it, they're talking about, wow, there was a disturbance going on and order was restored. Peace and order was restored, however the peace was restored. But then the other type of peace that the dictionary describes is freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. And that's typically what most of us are experiencing, is disquieting thoughts, our emotions. When we see what we're, is going on, when we hear the news reports, and we see all this that is bombarding us with the world system of the news and everything else that they use, uh, the, the Internet texting even, uh, and we simply get caught up because we tend to forget the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 that says that we live by faith and not by sight. And yet the world system says, look at all this. Satan is simply trying to get us so focused on what's going on and whether it's, it's what's going on right now with everything or some storm, I'll call them storms of life. We all go through different storms. It may be in your finances, it may be your children, it may be your marriage. There are storms that are always constantly, constantly coming against us, trying to get us to get focused on what's going on. Lose our focus, because our focus has to be in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ crucified. Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross. Because if our focus isn't there, if our faith isn't placed there, then we're going to be moved. We're going to become disturbed. We're going to lose our peace. And that's not something that the church, the Christian, should experience. We should be so rooted, so firmly grounded, so much that our trust, our confidence, and our hope is in what Jesus Christ has accomplished. And the fact that he has accomplished it, it is a finished work. He has fought the battles. He has already won the battles. Victory is ours. He calls us overcomers. He calls us victorious. There's a reason he does that. It's because he's already paid the price for everything that we'll ever have need of. Everything. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what are you experiencing in your life? What's going on? Are you experiencing peace? The Bible calls it peace that passes all understanding. Because in the natural, 
The world doesn't know how to obtain this kind of peace. The world has no hope. Absolutely nothing. They only have the world system. And the world system is upside down right now in case you haven't noticed. We, however, need to know that the way to obtain that and even the way that we obtain it is, again, not by us having to do works, nothing along those lines. It's just accepting what Jesus Christ has already provided. Zechariah um, 4, 6 says that it is by his spirit, not by might, not by power, not by strength, but by his spirit. You see, if we are tapped in and allowing the Holy Spirit, which dwells in every believer, and that happened as soon as you accepted Jesus Christ, you were filled with the spirit. He came to dwell in you. The word of God actually talks about it. When, when Jesus said, it is far more expedient for me to go, to go back and rise up and take the right hand seat of, at the Father's side so that the Holy Spirit would come dwell with us. The Holy Spirit, our helper, our comforter, our guide, our teacher, our everything, he is the one that's dwelling in us, living inside of us, he is bigger than any situation, any problem that you're ever going to face or that you have ever faced. We just simply have to learn to quit trying to figure out how we can handle the problem, how we can manipulate it so it turns out the way we want results to turn out and recognize that God is in control. God is in control. I said God is in control, not me, not you. And when we start realizing that and allowing ourselves to trust him and put our confidence in him and let him direct us, guide us, help us, we can do all things, all things in Christ. In what he did, he paid the price, and the Holy Spirit is simply now going, I'm here to help you. To obtain peace that you can't even begin to understand. Peace. Peace. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. Everything working to your good. You know, the, the scriptures say it in so many different places. All things work to the good of those who love God. Well, who loves God? Those who are obedient to his commandments. And those who have learned to turn loose of your way, your will, and go, God, my life should be directed by your will for me, your plan for me. And if I'm listening to the Holy Spirit as he gives me direction towards those plans, I will have a peace that I don't even understand why I have peace with and something's going on. Because I know that I know that I know that you've already got it under control. It didn't catch you by surprise. It may have caught me by surprise, but it didn't catch you by surprise. And all you want us to do is simply begin to listen more and more to that little quiet voice. Let us hear the voice of God as he speaks and gives us direction, as he gives us hope, as he gives us life. He is a living God who brings life to us. He is not some stone sitting out there that we talk to and never answers. The word of God says, my sheep know my voice. But are we listening for it? Are we tuning in to hear God in his direction during the storms? Or are we just sitting in the boat, looking at the storm, wondering when I'm going to die? Folks, that's not the case. It is not. That's not God's plan for us. But it takes faith. The Word of God says that anything that's not of faith is sin. Romans 14, 23. If I haven't learned to live by faith, ah, but the key is not do I have faith. It's every born-again believer has faith. But the key is where are you placing your faith? Is it in your abilities, your strength, your wisdom, or is it in the Word of God? 
Are we actually looking in the Word every day, reading the Word, edifying ourselves, building ourselves up, praying in our most Holy Spirit so that we are built up and ready to withstand the storms? Because as Pastor said, there's going to be a rolling storm after storm after storm. And if you don't believe that, just look back in your life. Some of you may not be that old and don't have that many storms. Some of us are my age. And we have experienced many storms. And unfortunately, handled most of them incorrectly. But when you start to turn loose, cast all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries over on him, knowing that his love for us is so great, so great. How great? He sent his son to the cross to do a finished work, to cause us to be brought back into sonship, fellowship with him, to be part of his family, that he will watch over us, guide us, lead us, always in everything. We just need to quit worrying. Worrying, worrying, worrying is simply a form of fear. And worry brings with it doubt. And doubt brings with it hesitation, wondering. Wondering brings with it wandering. Where do you wander from? You start wandering into anything that sounds good, that might sound like it'll take care of the problem you're facing. But I've got news for you. Down the road, you're going to find out that what you thought was going to be a blessing and get you out of your problem turned out to create more problems than you could have had if you would have just listened and followed the leading and unctioning of God's Word and the Holy Spirit when He's speaking to us. That's why it's so important to pray. Prayer is conversation with a living God, a God who wants to talk to us, wants us to hear His voice, wants to give us instructions that we might have life and life more abundantly. And I'm not talking about driving a Mercedes or driving a, a, a Lamborghini. I'm talking about a spiritual life that is able to withstand anything that comes at you, that is able to take up the shield of faith and quench every fiery dart that the enemy throws at you, a peace that no matter what happens, you know whether you're going to be thrown in the furnace that the fourth man will show up. Hallelujah. Whether you're in the boat, he will wake up. He will. He will deliver you from the storms because that's who God is. He is a God who delivers. He is a God who saves. He is a God who desires for you and I to experience life. An exorbitant, expedient, wonderful life here on earth. Now, does that mean that you're not going to go through situations, problems, tests, trials, tribulations? No. But all of a sudden, when you're going through them, you have peace. Peace. I can't even begin to tell you how great it is to have peace in the midst of something going on. Hallelujah. Let's read Philippians 4, 7 real quick. Let me look it up and I'll be right back there. You know, Jesus gave us this word so that we could do what I'm doing right now. Stop. Look up a scripture. Find a scripture that applies to our situation. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, sanctifying peace, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He will keep your heart. He will keep your mind. You know, your mind is an active thing that sometimes just doesn't want to shut off. But God will shut it off and bring you peace. God will get you so focused on him that you won't even notice what's going on around you. It won't bother you or upset you. It won't cause you to get into turmoil. It will simply cause your mind to get so focused on the promises of God, which are all yes and amen, to the place that no matter what you're going through, you're able to simply say, that's okay. God will take care of it. I'll come out of it like the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not even smelling of smoke. Hallelujah. I'll come out of the lion's den with no tooth marks, nothing, 
no scratches because God shut the mouths of the lions. God will bring you through. He has already provided a way out of every single situation and that is simply trusting in him knowing that he is and he will be always the same. A God who loves you. Nothing can separate us from his love, from his mercy, from his grace. Nothing. But we need to do our part because the word of God says, if you abide in me, I'll abide in you. So we do our part by abiding in him, by being in the word, by praying, by spending time with him, developing that personal relationship with him, knowing his voice, hearing his voice, and then being quick to act when we hear it or quick not to do something when he says don't do something. It works both ways. But it's all designed to keep us on that straight and narrow path that he's laid out before us where there aren't a bunch of potholes, where there aren't, you know, the cliffs are on all sides, but they only are there to hurt me if I stray from the word of God, stray from what the Holy Spirit is directing me and leading me to do. But if I can stay tuned in, stay hearing his voice, stay in the word of God, finding what the word of God says about a situation. And no matter how bad it seems, knowing that God is God, I can obtain peace. Peace, again, that passes all understanding. Because he is my helper. Not only in a time when things are good, because he's the one who brought the goodness, but in the times of when I need help. He is there. He is there. <laughs> I go back to the story of the disciples getting in the boat. And Jesus comes into the boat and says, we're going to the other side. And he lays down and goes to sleep. They get a little ways out. I don't know how far, but I know all of a sudden... The storm shows up. The disciples are wide awake, big-eyed, wondering what in the world is going on. How can he be sleeping? How can this man be sleeping when he knows the storm is going on? He has to, the boat's rocking, water's coming into it, everything. How is he still sleeping through it? Well, simple. Jesus said he never did anything except that that the Father told him to do. So when he got in the boat and said, we're going to the other side, he said that because the Father told him, you're going to the other side. Well, if God told him he was going to the other side, guess what? No matter what the enemy does, no matter what attack comes, no matter what storm comes at me, I know for a fact I'm going to the other side. And he experienced peace, peace that lets him go to sleep. His faith was in the Father. His trust, his confidence was in God. When they awoke him, what did he say to the disciples? Oh, ye of little faith. Mm. They hadn't put their trust, their confidence in God to get them to the other side. They got focused on the storm, the enormity of the bigness, the storm, the waves, the wind. And all Jesus did was speak a word to it. Peace, be still. Didn't say he shouted it at it. He just looked at it and said, peace, be still. What boat are you in that's being rocked? Look to God and trust him knowing that destruction is not in your end. Have faith that simply says, God is God. Jesus finished the work already, and I receive what he has done for me, and I will experience peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. The Word of God, let's look at John 14. Verse 27. 
it's amazing when you go through the Bible <clears throat> how you can find all sorts of scriptures that tie together. In fact, every scripture in the Bible ties together and points back to one thing, the love of God. Why would God want to give us peace? Because he loves us. Because you and I are special. You and I are, according to the word, the apple of his eye. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a scripture where Jesus is talking again to the disciples. And he's telling them that, you know, I'm about to leave you and to go be with the Father. But don't worry, the Comforter is coming. It's more expedient that I go, as I said earlier. But in verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Wow. Let not your heart be troubled. Let it not be afraid. It means we have a choice. You and I have a choice when we're facing things to not let our hearts get troubled, to not let our mind run rampant with all sorts of thoughts of, of what's going to happen, not let our mind try and figure out what can I do to solve this situation, but simply go, I'm going to get in the Word and see what the Word of God says. I'm going to pray and call out to my God, my Father. I'm going to call out in the name of Jesus and ask for guidance and direction and help. And then I'm going to listen and thank God I know his voice and I'll hear his voice because he does not, not answer my prayers. The Word of God says in John, 1 John 5, 14, that this is the assurance that we have, that if we pray according to his will, his word, that we have an assurance that he not only hears us, but that he grants us our petitions because we're praying according to his will. So again, I get back to simply having to say this to you. Quit trying to do it your way. Your way will lead to failure. Your way is going to lead to struggles, not having any peace. But when we listen and get the instruction of the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to do His job to lead us, guide us, direct us, then and then only do we know that when we pray, He hears us and we will have our petitions, what we're asking for, granted by a living God, a loving God, a God who desires for us to walk in this earth holy, upright, and we can't do it on our own works. We can't do it through our own abilities, our own strength. It is only by the Spirit of the living God that lives inside of us that we are able to do anything in this earth that amounts to anything to God. And if you're anything like I think you are, your desire is to please God more than anything else. It is to be able to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Guess what? Servants don't do their own thing. Servants do the will of the person they're serving. Our lives, once we accepted Christ, became a life of trying to please God. God has to be first place in our lives. Yes, everything else will fall into place. Your marriage will fall into place. Your children will fall into place. Your finances will fall into place. Everything will fall into place when we put God first and seek God and listen to him and follow his instructions. But we're so busy trying to do it our own way, folks. I know I've tried this for years and years and years, and my way is never the way God does things. But yet every time... I sit back and have finally turned loose of something and just given it to God and said, God, I don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and it makes no difference to me. I give it to you because I need to quit worrying. I need to be able to sleep at night. I need not to sit at home trying to figure out everything and what to do it and what step, the first step, the second step, the third, the sixth, the seventh step. Everybody has steps on how to do something. There's only one step. Trust God. Let God be God. Let him lead you. Let him direct you. Let him guide you. 
Let me go back now and, and finish up where I wanted to here with uh, John 16, 33. Again, he's talking to the disciples. But folks, when we read this, he's talking to you and me. You and me. His children. Because it holds true today just like it did then. And he simply is sitting there and saying, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Is there any tribulation going on in this world that we're living in right now? It seems like it has overrun with it. Confusion everywhere. But be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Recognize the battle is God's, not yours, not mine, but his. Let him fight the battle. Yeah, we will have to do things. We're in his army. But let me tell you, when he's in the fight, the fight goes much easier. Look at Joshua. Moses is no longer there. Joshua, God has chosen to lead his people into victory, into the promised land. And they go in to fight the battle at Jericho. Now, most of us would have taken the, all the captains, the chiefs, everybody, and said, okay, who's going to get out here first? Who's going to, let's get this plan. We've got to have a military plan of action. Let's figure this out. And instead, God speaks to him and just simply says, put the priest out in front. Not the military might. Put the priest out in front. Get some trumpets out there. March around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, blow the trumpets. That shows us that this was a spiritual battle. And when God's in it, it is a spiritual battle. But yet his spiritual battles causes results in the natural. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. And the victory... was theirs. Now we got to be careful because when the victories come so easily, sometimes we think, look at what I did. And we didn't do anything except follow the directions of the Holy Spirit. The very next battle he went into, Ai, he sent spies out doesn't say anywhere in there that he consulted God like he did when he was fighting the battle of Jericho. Didn't say anything. He just said, well, we're going to send some spies out. We're going to have them come back. They're going to give us a report. Their report was simply, there's not many of them. They're not much. We don't even have to send the whole army out. We can send a couple of divisions out. That's fine. We don't need to do that. We'll take care of them with no problem. Forgot to consult God. Big mistake. Because they got whooped real bad by those ones that they said couldn't whip us, couldn't do anything. So bad that Joshua got to a point that he was crying out to God and he was going, I don't understand. His faith was rocked. And God had to remind him. You didn't get me involved in your battle. And if you're not going to have me involved in it, you're going to experience a lot of defeats, a lot of failures. It's time for us, the body of Christ, the Christians, to quit experiencing failures and defeats. And the only way you and I are ever going to do that is to start consulting God in every situation that we face, every situation that comes before us, we need to be consulting God, knowing that God wants to be involved in every decision. No matter how small it may seem, He wants to be involved. And if we want to experience the victories and not the defeats, we need to realize that if we don't get Him involved, we're just going to continue down the same road we've been walking down for years and years and years.
I don't know about you, but I'm determined to seek God, not his hand, but his face, more than I have ever done before. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be able to say, I need to be about the Father's business, not my business. Yes, I'm an associate pastor, but I also have a business. I also have a wife. I have a family. And I have to have time to spend with them and times to do things to, to run my business. But I got news. They can't be first place. God's business has to be first place. If that means I have to go to bed at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and get up at 5 or 6 in order to spend time with God and be in the Word, then so be it. Because that has to be the importance. He has to be first place. He's not a God who will play second fiddle, folks. He is a jealous God. Let's quit playing games and start living for Christ. Let's change this world that we live in because we start being obedient to his instructions and his life style instead of ours. So I'm going to end with a little prayer here. Father, as we come to you tonight, I thank you. I thank you so much for the leading and unctioning of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Fine-tune our hearing, Lord. Let our spiritual ears become so fine-tuned that you don't have to shout. It's that still, quiet voice that we hear in the midst of all the commotion and all the pandemonium. It makes no difference. We fine-tune to such a point that we're always listening to hear your voice, Lord. And then, Lord, I know we're willing, but let us truly be obedient to what we hear. Again, your word says, my sheep know my voice, so it's not that we will be deceived, but we will be able to take what we hear, and if we're not sure, we can go to the word of God and find it, because what you speak to us in the spirit will always line up with the word of God. So we thank you, Lord, that because we are the willing and obedient, that we will begin eating the good of the land. We will begin taking land back. We will begin conquering strongholds and tearing them down for you lord that the world will know who you are that the world that this city that this nation that this state will understand that there is a god and there is a god who is a fervent god and a god who cannot be played games with let us truly lord cause lost souls to come to you as they see your greatness and the peace that you bring to your children. Let them desire to such a degree that when they see your peace, your calmness, you're, you're just covering our lives, that they come to us and ask, what is it that you have? And we can share that it is Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ that can bring you through the trials and tribulations and give you peace, can bring you salvation, can get you not only saved, but sanctified in a, for lack of a better word, a ticket to heaven. Lord, we just thank you for all that you do for us. Let us continually be in a state of joyfulness, cheerfulness. You said to rejoice again, rejoice in all things. Because no matter what it is that we see, we can rejoice knowing that you're in control and that you and you alone are the answer, hallelujah, and that it's been provided to us already. So in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name, church, I just simply say, may the peace of God go with you wherever you go. In Jesus' name, amen and good night. God bless all.